These are the five things you really must see from Everything Electric London 2024. Hello, hello. I am not long back from Everything Electric London 2024, which is the fully charged show's all-electric extravaganza of everything from micromobility, e-scooters, e-bikes, all that kind of stuff, through electric cars to home heating, heat pumps, home energy, solar, all that stuff. We're going to focus on cars because that's kind of what this channel is all about. And I'm going to talk to you about the five highlights of the show for me. First up, the Silence S04 is finally here after quite a long time of, of people talking about it. And it is remarkable. If you're not familiar, the Silence S04 is an all-electric quadricycle, often talked about in the same context as the Citroen Ami, just because it also happens to be a small electric quadricycle. Um, and this was the first public unveiling of the Silence S04. Uh, there were some reviews came out in like Autocar and Auto Express and stuff last week, and this was the first time the public could actually both see them and take a test drive. I think the constant comparison to AMI is a little bit unfair. The Silence is a L7 quadricycle, so it's in the next sort of type approval category up. It has a top speed of 54 miles an hour and it has a 92 mile range. So we're talking about something that is almost twice as capable as the Citroen AMI. Uh, and well, it ought to be because it's twice the price, but it is a lot more capable and therefore I, I don't think it's always fair to make that comparison. A better comparison would probably be to the Renault Twizy that, that came before. Obviously you can't buy the Twizy in the UK anymore but the final Twizzies that you could buy with a battery owned were, were quite expensive as well and therefore I think if we compare it sort of like for like with other L7 quadricycles of which at the moment there aren't many available uh, especially here in the UK that probably explains the difference in price and I'll get to price later. But I did manage to take a test drive in one, and it really was quite something. Uh, the performance was really, really good. So you got 54 mile an hour top speed, and uh, not to 30, takes less than 7 seconds. Uh, so performance wise, it's in a completely different league to AMI, and, and it's about, on, on faster roads, it's much, much more capable. You don't have the issue with the, the sort of both the 28 mile an hour top speed and how slowly it gets there, it's holding you back. Uh, it's definitely for those that want a little bit more performance. All of those people out there that talk about AMI and say, oh, it's too slow, I couldn't drive that, the, the top speed would be dangerous, etc. The S04 completely solves all of those worries that you might have. And uh, the comfort and stuff is just in a different league. I mean, it's got air conditioning. Uh, the interior actually has, you know, proper panels everywhere and, and it just feels more like someone's taken a car and made it smaller it doesn't feel anywhere near as compromised and the suspension actually works pretty well all right if you hit a bump quite going quite quickly you'll still feel it uh, and there's there's a limitation of what you can do in such a small vehicle uh the these tiny little quadricycles and stuff they, they tend to run around close to their sort of maximum payload all the time so they, there's a design challenge there for, for suspension uh that just isn't there with sort of proper cars where you've got a lot more sort of to play with but they've done a good job of it and it was definitely much, much more comfortable than I was expecting it to be and it handled bumpy roads and stuff a lot better. Uh, an interesting feature is the removable battery pack. So it has a battery in each side. They are exactly the same battery as you would find in a Silence scooter or a, a Seat Mo is the same thing, just rebadged. Uh, it's the same battery pack. It pulls out and then it has wheels and a handle like a, a trolley suitcase so you can wheel it away. Uh, perfect if you live in a flat, you can take it up to your flat and you can plug it in. So that whole how do I charge it thing goes away because you can park the, the, the vehicle wherever you need to park it and you can take the batteries with you to charge it. It uses two batteries, one on each side of the car. And actually, um, I asked the questions. I said, well, what happened? Like, it seemed to be depleting them equally as I drove. But like, what happens? Can, can you have? Can you just run a one battery? And, and the answer to that is actually no, because th there's a motor on each side for each, for, for each wheel. Um, so obviously for two, for two wheels. And one battery drives one motor. So it needs both in order to run. But the removable thing, I think, is a really good feature. I, I, I think for people that have charging challenges, the removable batteries definitely addresses that because you can take the battery to where the power source is. You don't need to take the car. 
£15,995 though is what it will cost you to get into a Silence SO4 and whilst it was impressive, I was definitely impressed by it, I loved the way it drove, I, it had performance in spades and then it was sort of everything you'd want from it, I still think that that is a bitter pill to swallow. Not because the Citroen Ami is half the price, because I think as we've established it's half the car, but because for 16 grand you can buy, well the upcoming Dacia Spring uh, if you want to go new, but you could also buy a very likely used Renault Zoe. I mean, my 71 red Renault Zoe cost less than that, and I sold it for less than that. Uh, so you could get yourself into something like a Zoe or a VW E-Up, etc. Various smaller EVs available, and then some bigger EVs available too. I mean, you can get into a Hyundai Kona, Kia e Nero for that kind of money on the second-hand market. But I, I, I'm i not one of these people that is, oh, you know, these various old things are cheaper than this new thing. We, we know that that's how it works. The second-hand market, things are cheaper. But I do think it's a harder value proposition when you see that you can get an actual car for the price of a quadricycle. And I do think that's what some people are going to struggle with. I wish them all the success in the world because I thought it was a brilliant product. But I am a little bit worried about the value proposition. I'm a little bit worried that some people, or a lot of people, are going to be turned off by the price. I'm kind of hopeful that as time goes on, they can maybe make some savings in sort of production costs and stuff and just bring that price down just a little bit. I think even if it was around sort of 12 grand, I think they would clean up and they would, they would sell loads of them because it was really, really impressive. I'd fully recommend if you can get a drive in one to do so because I thought it was really good. That wasn't the only quadricycle present at the show. Uh, the Do Good Motor Zero was there. Uh, if you wonder what, the, what on earth that is, remember we had talked before about the Arc Zero. Well, Arc rebranded themselves as Do Good. And they, ha they had one there. It exists. Um, I'm not sure about the, uh, a bit like this Maxxis that I'm sitting in now, the motor sort of hanging off the back axle. You could actually see it under the rear bumper. Uh, and all in all, there was no getting away from the fact it was just quite a, a sort of cheap imported thing um, with the weird um, Union Jack on the steering wheel and stuff. I, I'm not quite sure what they're going for. There wasn't anybody from Do Good Motors there to talk to because I'd like to have talked to them to learn more about the, the proposition and, and what have you and, and actually get a closer look at it. But first impressions, haven't seen it. It's cheap and nasty, and, and I don't actually know who's going to buy one. The The prospect of a, a three-horsepower motor or whatever it is um, doesn't sound like much fun. Ami's got eight horsepower, and it's slow enough. So, yeah, I remain to be convinced on that one. And I also saw the MEV City. Now, I've actually seen these in other countries. I've seen them on the road in other countries. I think, they're again, they're an import that get, that get branded up. Um, but they look quite good. Uh, it... What was really interesting, I think, more than the car version, because the car version, well, I don't know, I'm not sh I'm not sold on the car version, it looks okay, but these commercial offerings they had with, like, um, you know, like a caged, like, flatbed and stuff, absolutely perfect for, like, holiday parks and then, like, airports and stuff where you want to move things around the airside. I think they've got real potential there. I'm not sold on the car version. I don't think people are going to be rushing out to buy those, but the commercial ones, I think, looked brilliant. And I do think they will have success in selling those. Next up, BYD are coming in a big, big way. A Chinese auto manufacturer, BYD, were there with probably the biggest stand. I don't, I don't know if it was exactly the biggest stand, but it certainly had the most impact. Uh, and it was the busiest by a long way. Huge amounts of interest in their products. Uh, and there was loads and loads of staff as well. Um, so they, any question you had, they could answer. And they were very attentive and, and definitely very, very keen to let people learn more about the product and, and, and very passionate. And I think it showed that they really do have the right attitude to trying to break into the, the UK or the European market. Um, I, I think if anybody's in any doubt that these Chinese automakers are going to be a success, BYD at least are setting the blueprint, I think, for how to do it properly. Uh, I took a test drive in a BYD SEAL, uh, which, well... <laughs> It was a little bit of a slow crawl round near the XL. Um, I couldn't even manage to drive it as fast as I had done with the, the Silence SO4 just because the traffic was building up. Uh, and there was a lot of other people out taking test drives and stuff. And it was not the best location for it. I do think the guys at, at, at Fully Charged can maybe think a little bit about location. Like the XL, when you've got all these cars going out for test drives. I don't know. It's not brilliant. But uh, the, 
the one thing I did notice though about the seal was the fit and finish everywhere was just superb. It was very comfortable. It was very well appointed inside. And I thought it was just a really, really, really good looking car. Um, all the software seemed very responsive and, and, and all that stuff. Um, none of that sort of usual unfinished feel. I mean, it, like this, again, this Maxis I'm sat in at the moment, you know, all in all, the software's crap. The fit and finish is a bit meh. And it's, it feels like an unfinished product. You don't have that with BYD at all. It, it's proper. And, and I, I would actually say it, it felt much more premium than like MG and stuff does too. Uh, I, I do honestly think they're a force to be reckoned with. Um, I'd love to actually have another, a proper test drive in the seal and properly put it through its, its paces because they really do seem like a manufacturer that are going to be here for the long run. I, it seems to me like they uh, understand how to properly build a brand and, and sell products people actually want to buy. They're not just bringing over some cars and throwing them into the market and hoping for the best. Uh, there were other incumbent Chinese manufacturers at the show. Uh, we had GWM Aura with the Zero Three or the, the Funky Cat. Um, I don't. I really don't get why they changed the name, and that's kind of what I mean about not fully understanding the market, throwing some products into it, and then just making changes if it doesn't quite work out. GWM, I think, are a prime example of that. I mean, changing the name of the thing after bringing it into market just seems silly. Um, I had a test drive slot booked for the Zero Three, but unfortunately, another test drive overran, so I missed it. So I, I would still like to to drive one. I actually very, very nearly bought an Aura Funky Cat last week. Uh, it was at a salvage auction. It was Category S. Um, and I mean, the amount of damage it had, it, it wouldn't be Category S if it was from a brand where you can easily get parts. It sold for £4,160 uh, plus VAT and fees for a 2023 car, which, I mean, I, uh, there was no mileage uh, verifiable because the, the odometer wasn't, wasn't working, um, I'm guessing, uh, it reported those problems with the keys and stuff. I'm guessing that sort of post accident, it was in a bit of a state, and, and and that all needed to be sorted out. It would probably have been a disaster, but if it had stayed as cheap as it was, uh, and obviously forty one sixty is quite cheap, but it's just a little bit beyond what I wanted to risk on it. Uh, so yeah, I very very nearly owned a funky cat. I'm kind of glad that I didn't, but um, it would have been quite interesting, I think. So I, I'd still like, I would definitely still like to drive one and see what they're like. The interior and stuff looked quite nice. I had a poke around one that was on display at the show and it looked pretty good. Uh, Omoda were there as well, launching the Omoda E5. Um, Omoda is a brand from the, uh, a very large Chinese car manufacturer called Cherry. Uh, and this was the launch of the E5 in the UK. And yet it was very low key. The car was just sort of on display in the same area where the uh, the Do Good Zero was. Um, there was at least someone there to talk about it from Omoda. Um, but uh, this is a, sort of another good example of, of the Chinese brands that don't seem to be quite prepared. They're just kind of wing it and seeing what happens. The car looked really good. I sat in it. It, it looked really nice. Interior seemed quite good quality and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it just seemed really weird if this was the UK launch. There wasn't even any, like, branded signage or anything like that. Um, but And apparently, you know, this seemed to me like they were just introducing a concept, but apparently they are taking orders very, very soon indeed, and these cars are pretty much ready to go. And yet it all just seems really, really low-key and a bit weird. And, and, and I think it's these incumbent brands that might not last the test of time if they're not quite actually giving you a full launch for anything. Whereas, like, BYD... It's definitely not the case. They mean business. The Ford E-Transit shows you what electric vans really are capable of. Uh, Ford were offering test drives of the Mustang Mach-E and the E-Transit. So obviously I had to flock to the E-Transit because commercial vehicles seem to now be what we're all about on this channel. Uh, it looks and feels like a Ford Transit. Solid, capable commercial vehicle with all the space you need. Uh, well designed, well laid out, you know, ergonomic, all that stuff you'd expect from the Ford Transit. And that is a good thing. You need people that are going to switch away from their diesel vans to be very familiar. Uh, you need to be able to get in, drive the thing and not have to be like, oh, how does it work, etc. Until you start it up, of course, and it is absolutely silent. All of that noise, vibration and harshness from a horrible diesel engine chuntering away in a van is gone. And, um... Modern Ford diesels are obviously a lot better than, you know, like sort of turn of the millennium transits might be or, or older. Uh, but there's still noise, vibration and harshness levels that you get from a diesel engine and especially in a commercial vehicle 
that the electric power train just completely does away with. And it was remarkable. I took a test drive in it and it was really, really good. Um, and you, what you're left with is a proper van, but one that is extremely smooth, quiet, um, you know, and, and it just gets on with it without making a song and dance about it. And I, I thought it was really, really good. I mean, the sooner these things are in as many people's hands as possible, the better. Um, I know there are some edge cases where you've got to use a van to pound up and down the country and all that stuff, but there are equally as many where you do not do loads and loads of miles, but you just need to move stuff from A to B. And that the e-transit seems absolutely perfect for it and very, very versatile as well. I was really impressed with Ford. Uh, they had, they, these guys that were here from Ford doing the test drives and stuff, the dedicated event staff, that, that's their job. And they were very, very knowledgeable, but they weren't giving you the hard sell. And the guy I did the test drive with, very keen to, to sort of dispel EV myths and stuff. Now, obviously, um, he uh, didn't really need to do that with me, but we had some very good conversation uh, about people's perceptions of EVs and what they do to uh, counteract that. And, and it was really, really good. I was really impressed with Ford indeed. I'm sure they'll also want me to tell you that the new Ford Explorer was there as well. Um, and rather than just harping on about the transit all day. Uh, and it does. It looks really good. Quite impressed with the look of the new Explorer. Uh, I do hope I can manage to get a drive of one of them pretty soon too. It was just a static display. But it looked really, really good. Uh, and that for Ford was probably the highlight of the show. But for me, the e-transit the e absolutely stole the show. It was brilliant. Next up, Maxxis is not the only electric pickup in the UK. Whilst there was a Maxxis T90 EV on display at the show, uh, a white one like this one I'm sat in now, but with every single possible accessory bolted onto it, which was a little bit weird, um, there was much bigger electric pickup news than that. Right at the entrance, right as you walk into the show, there was a Rivian R1T and a Ford F150 sitting. And I, I couldn't quite believe it when I walked in. I was like, wow, what's going on here? Turns out these are available to rent from eVision Electric Vehicles. They're a rental company, they're based in Kent, and they've got branches in Devon, Yorkshire, Durham, and Glasgow as well. And um, they will rent you a Rivian R1T or a Ford F150. Now, the temptation to actually rent both of those and compare it to this heap of junk is really, really strong. I think it would make a really, really good video. However, uh, for short-term rental, the Rivian is a thousand quid a day. And the Ford F-150 is 650 quid a day. Uh, so I think in order for me to even be able to remotely justify doing that, I'm going to need many, many more of you to click that subscribe button and help this channel grow before there'll be budget like that for making a single video. Uh, they have one of each for sale as well. Uh, 175 grand for the Rivian R1T, all registered on UK roads, ready to go. And 115 grand for a Ford F-150. So if you really do want a proper all-electric pickup truck uh, and the Maxxis doesn't quite cut it for you, you know where to go. Speaking of Maxxis, as well as the T90 EV, they had a few of their other models on display as well. They had the E-Deliver 9, the all-new E-Deliver 7, and the uh, MIFA or MIFA, whatever the hell it's called, 9, uh, which is the people carrier version. Um, I thought, uh, apart from the sort of questionable exterior looks, uh, the interior actually looked really, really good. It looked really plush, looked really nice. Uh, I don't quite know why they're not badging that up as an MG, because it's surely it's a car. Uh, but I'm guessing their their take is it's a commercial vehicle, it's aimed at the taxi market, and therefore Maxxis is the commercial brand, and that's what they're going to do. But I don't really get it. I think with an MG badge on it, they probably sell loads of them. But I don't claim to understand the logic behind some of the stuff that SAIC do. Uh, but I did like the look of it, and I, and I thought that... Um, it looked like quite a strong offering, and I'm sure we'll start seeing them being used as taxis fairly shortly. Last but not least, then, MG were another brand there with a pretty big presence. Uh, they had the MG Cyberster on display. Now, uh, stupid name aside, uh, it wasn't just the usual red one, but uh, this yellow one here that is on display is the crazy dual motor all-wheel drive version. There was loads of interest in this car. All day I could see that it was big crowds, people taking photos and stuff. Even in the sort of videos and stuff I've got here, there's loads of other people crowding around. Uh, it was absolutely swarmed by people all day. I think when they actually get around to selling these things, they're going to sell absolutely loads of them because the interest levels in them seem very, very high indeed. It is a shame about the name though. I'm not quite sure what the thinking sticking with it. I just thought somebody at some point would have realised that it's a little bit stupid. And actually, if you give it a bit more normal name, it will be even more appealing to the mass market. 
They also had the MG4 X Power and the ZS EV on display. Uh, I, the green of the MG4 actually looks even better in person than it does in photos. I thought it looked really, really good indeed. Uh, they were doing test drives of the MG4 X Power. Um, I, I did. I was a bit late to the party on that one, so I couldn't get one. But I, I'm not sure how much you could experience the 430 horsepower on the roads around the XL anyway. Uh, you know, at 20 miles an hour, I'm not sure you quite get the full benefit of the X power. Although maybe some people did. So if you managed to test drive one and, and you could actually unleash the those 430 horses, do let me know in the comments. There was a huge amount of other stuff at Everything Electric 2024, but they those were the five key highlights for me. If you were there over this weekend and there was some stuff that you saw that you think was bigger or more important than what I've listed here, please do get yourself in the comments and let me know about it. And if there's anything here that, that catches your eye and you want to tell me what you think, again, the comments is the place to be. But that's all we've got for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.